Mm. You know, what's so, what's, so, what's so powerful of what you just said is that one, one of the deeper questions you can possibly ask yourself is what do you do when your dream is not your destiny? Ooh. I'm about to throw my shoe at myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you do when you've been working for something your whole life right. and you get to the moment where you realize, I don't think I'm supposed to be doing this. Mm -hmm. and, and, the reason, and the reason I can sort of offer that to you, and, and now we can pivot, is because you become an entrepreneur who has done extremely, you become extremely successful yeah. and you're helping people. And, and you're probably, probably accomplishing more in the second act of your life than you did pursuing your dream. That's, true. that's, for, that's a fact. <laughs> and, and what's strange about that is this, and this is why it fascinates me, is that, I said it in the, in the intro, people plan for success, but they don't plan for failure. Mm -hmm. And what I want to know is, did you, have a, did you have a plan B? I did not have a plan B. Never had a plan B. Um, probably needed a plan B. Uh, but I, 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 at the same time, they don't really teach plan Bs, right? So how, how did you fall into entrepreneurship? I didn't know what I was going to do. Mm. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do. I just, I just knew that I was tired of waiting for somebody else to give me something. That was never... Mm. how I am. I think I talked about at the beginning when things are bad, I control what I can control. Mm. And I was out of control in that full situation. I didn't have no control over anybody signing me, calling mm. me, looking mm. at tape. None of that stuff was in my control. So that's when entrepreneurship came into play, was the fact that I could control that. I could mm. go do, get back to work. Mm. And I didn't have to wait for anybody to give me anything. I mean, I've probably applied. When I, was, when I said I got a job, I was working for my dad. So it wasn't even a real job, right? It's not like I got hired somewhere. Um, but I applied for jobs, and I never, got, I never got accepted to any jobs, even though I have a master's degree, a, full, uh, you know, a degree from University of Virginia, and all these different types of things. Um, but at the end of the day, I wasn't, I wasn't in control. Mm. And, for, and to me, that was a sign that I need to take life by the, by the horns mm. and, and, and control what I can control. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I, I, I think most of the people in here can relate to that feeling when you, when, when you are no longer in control of what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and just tell me if you agree. Isn't that one of the most scariest feelings in the world? When you, when you can't, you just can't, you, you can no longer decide what your tomorrow will be about, let alone what you're about to do in the next 15 minutes. Right. And, and, and we lose people in that feeling. Some people don't survive that moment. Some people don't survive that moment. So, so, so I need to say to you, you know, that well done, sir, because, because we lose. But what, I, what I call that moment, I call it the turn. And it's the turn because it's the moment where you can't see behind you and you can't see in front of you either. And, and we lose black men in the turn because most, most of us, we panic in the turn mm -hmm. or we go for something easy and quick, something that will support our ego. What I want to know is, how did you bump into entrepreneurship in the turn? Because most people only come into business through the straightaway. But right. you were in the worst moment of your life and ended up doing something that makes this next season of your life better than the first. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. I, and um, I was determined, first of all. I was determined. And I was, you know, hell-bent on, this isn't going to be my story. Uh, and I had to figure something out quickly. Mm. So uh, I really just took in what was around me. Back in Lexington, Kentucky, a lot of my friends and family were still, not, still without work, still struggling to get mm. jobs. And these are people that I grew up with. And I was wondering if it was the system that was the problem or it was them that was the problem. Because mm. I knew these kids. I knew they had good character, um, work hard, and this type of situation. But for some reason, they can't keep a job, mm. don't have jobs. So I tried to use my platform or create a platform where I can give them jobs and I can give them opportunities and find out, is it them or is it the system? Um, so wh which, which one was your first business? Uh, Helping Hands. Helping Hands, that was your first business. Yep, Helping Hands. And, and explain to everybody who's watching, because this, this, this is the power of your story. Yeah. We've, we've come to what Howard Thurman would call the needed core. <laughs> the power of your story is that you go from being low man on the roster, right? Out of the NFL, the crazy thing I just read, you're up in Canada, right? right? Trying to get the dream together. You end up working for your dad, right? But something, something comes over you to create this thing called Helping Hands mm -hmm. and tell the world what it does. 
Helping Hands is a student housing service company um, where we provide jobs and opportunities um, to the people of the community doing simple, simple jobs like moving, cleaning, painting. Uh, we found our niche in the student housing industry mm. uh, where a lot of the kids move out and you have this big issue in the student housing industry where it's a mass exodus and there's about a high volume of work. So just think about um, University of Southern California, University of Kentucky is where we started at, where mm -hmm. they have 7,000 beds and they're all empty and they have two and a half months to get everything back ready before the students move back in. Um, so that's mm. kind of where we found our niche at. It didn't start there, but we started off doing moving. Mm. When we was doing moving, I was just like, hey, I got kids that can work hard and they will, you know, I'll make sure that we do a good job. Um, they said, we don't budget for this. Y'all need to do the things that we need help with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So mm. they didn't really want the help with the moving day, but they kind of pushed us into where they actually put their money at. And since then, we've, we've done it all around the country, um, working in multiple states and multiple universities. Mm. Wow. So you created a niche. Yeah. <clears throat> you created an opportunity that wasn't there before. That's correct. Um, because I'm just, when I moved into college, I needed your business. You needed that. Because <laughs> Dr. Sean don't like to move boxes. Right, right. right. No, 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 no. It don't stop there. <laughs> Dr. Sean don't like to move furniture. Yeah. I don't like to move. When I move, the only thing I take are the keys. Right. I don't like to move nothing. Yeah. Where the hell were you? I needed you, my man. <laughs> Well, we're there now. We're there now. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm being pedantic and silly, but but where did the idea come from? Which is really what I'm getting to. Well, I was a college student just like you was a college student, right? And you didn't like the movie. Either? Yeah. Well, I just knew it was chaotic. Everybody was mm. everywhere. Everybody was on the grass. Um, mom, moms and dads running around trying to get Junior and Johnny's stuff up to the room, and there was no help. It was just everybody for themselves. <sighs> Need some water after that. So so yeah, that's where I'm, I just remembered that, and I was like, yo, I'm gonna try to sell this opportunity to them. Um, and like I just said, you know, they didn't really want that. They wanted what was making them money, getting their, lease, getting their rooms back leased up. Mm. But um, essentially that's where we started at and we're able to build relationships and um, grow from there. You know, it's interesting. It's very interesting to me because I'm fascinated with people who, who pivot, who pivot. Because so many people think that a pivot, a pivot rather is a failure. And it's not. Mm -mm. Sometimes the universe is trying to tell you something. I, I believe that you will always fail at the things you're not supposed to do. Yeah, definitely. You will always fail at the things you're not supposed to do. So, so when we fail, it's not life telling us you're a failure. It's life telling us that's not what you're supposed to do, or not right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So talk to me about what it takes. And I'm, I'm not talking practically in terms of money. I'm just talking in terms of spirit and mind and will, what does it take to pivot, to turn yeah. on a dime? Being open. Mm. I think being open is the first thing that you gotta have to pivot or else you'll just keep running down that hole. Um, I tell people, the first thing I did was stop digging. I stopped digging my hole, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Put the <laughs> shovel down. Yeah, put the shovel down. <laughs> um, and that's what the football, sports, athletics, I was in a hole mm. and I was trying to come out of there, but it was getting deeper and it was getting deeper, so I stopped digging. And um, you know, that's, that's, that's the first thing I would say is you gotta be open to changing. Some people are so committed to an idea or to a vision or to a goal that they don't even hear anything else that's going on outside of them. Um, and I've been there, Ooh. I was there. So th what really changed my life was listening. Was, was, was Yeah, no, that's up. rich, that's rich. Listening to what, to who? Listening to the voice that this isn't working. <laughs> Listening to that voice. But um, as far as I wouldn't no, say. No, 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 stay there, because that's so rich. Stay there for a second. What, I'm, I'm going to let you finish, okay. but stay there. But what, what, does that, what did that voice sound like to you? Um, just, just where I was at. It's not what my, my, what my vision was. It wasn't what my vision was. And, you know, my dad said something that stood out to me while right. I was in his office. Um, he said, you are a slave to this game being football. Mm. And I was looking at him like, isn't this what you did? <laughs> you know, isn't this what you did? I want, like, I can do the same thing that you did. And he was like, if you think this is all you can do, then you're a slave to that. And at the time I didn't really, you know, when you're with your parents, you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And, but ultimately it sat on my spirit and mm. I was like, He's, he might be right. Why am I sitting here thinking that this is the only thing that I can do? 
Um, and this is the only thing I've been put here to do. So Chase, let me tell you something. You know it's the truth when it's hard for you to hear it. Yeah. That's when you know it's the truth. When it's when it when it's hard, <laughs> when it when it when you hear it and you want to slap them for saying it, <laughs> it's probably true. Yeah. And that's and that's and that's one of the telltale signs. But you you were able to sit with what your dad said, and you were able to receive it and to take it into your as you said your spirit, mm. and you came out on the other side with a renewed commitment to really reimagine your life. Yep. And that's the value of the show, because what I'm hoping people will learn from you is that to reimagine your life is not an indication of failure. In fact, can I go further? Go ahead. I think change, you tell me, and you, I want you to respond to this. I think change is the ultimate complement of the universe. Change is life's way of saying you've mastered that. Mm -hmm. And you've gotten all you're gonna get out of that. And if you keep doing that, it's only gonna get worse. So you're gonna change because you're ready to graduate and you want more. Yeah. How would you respond to that? I mean, I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I feel like change is, you know, just the respect that you have for yourself. Hmm. Um, and that's ultimately where I came in, the fact that I feel like I was being disrespectful to everybody that raised me, um, everything else that I've done as far as education and mm. going to school, like why am I doing all this if, if I feel like this is the only thing that I can do? Mm. Uh, we're so much more out there, for, so much more capable of things. Um, so I agree with you wholeheartedly. Change is so important and you know, you gotta be open to change like we said. Mm. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you why, because if you're not, you know, it's, it's, it's the old adage of the willow and the oak tree in a storm. One bends and lives, the other one doesn't, breaks and dies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I and I, 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 look, I'm, I'm a little older than you, but I, 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 if, if I've learned anything in, in, my, in my days on this planet, it has been, if you can't adjust, you're done. Over. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. And uh, so your, your, your entrepreneurship is driven by what? Why are you an entrepreneur? Is it money? Is it, is it is you want to help people? Is, what is it? Um, first and foremost, it's for helping. Uh, my passion is creating jobs and creating opportunities uh, for people that don't have them or are looking for them. Mm. Um, and that's where Helping Hands has grown. Um, in Kentucky, we create probably over 300 jobs every summer mm. annually. Um, but then we grew outside of that and I actually brought in some of my former teammates to do the same thing we do in Kentucky in their areas and their cities. So we have you know Philadelphia, DC, Charlotte, mm. LA, uh, Vegas. Uh, we have regional partners, franchisees that do the same thing and I ask them, why do you guys want to keep doing this? And they feel the same way I feel is the fact of they're creating jobs for people in their community mm. that they know need jobs, need opportunity that may not have it. Yeah, you know, you know it's so interesting because I can, I can look at you now and say something to you that probably would have pissed you off 10 years ago. But I think when I say it, you'll appreciate and understand what I mean. I'm glad you failed. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> I am too. I am too. I'm glad you failed because you're, you're, you're doing so much good. Now tell me about Easy Turn. Yeah, so Easy Turn is actually kind of born out of helping hands. Um, Easy Turn is a tech platform. It's the first national vendor platform that can connect um, contractors and vendors to large contract opportunities like universities. Um, it was made out of my situation where oh, it helped. Speak English to me, like, come on, <laughs> what does that mean? So, so let me break it down. So as Helping Hands, we're contractors, we were doing works for universities. Mm -hmm. um, and in that process, you know, it was a lot of chaotic space and I'm probably being one of the youngest contractors. I was probably 25, 26, mm -hmm. um, running paint companies, cleaning companies to do work for large universities. And you know, they were doing it old school way with those Excel sheets and things of this nature. But then, you know, I try to do everything without paper, you know, using modern technologies mm -hmm. and everything that's out there to offer. Um, so I, just, I realized that they weren't able to do this in this most in the most hectic time of the year. Um, mm. So then I just decided to, all right, two years of doing this, three years of doing this, that you know, I felt like this was an opportunity. It was another opportunity for me to listen, um, and I just started drawing up screens. Um, of an app that I thought would benefit contractors 
working with larger universities and larger partners. Um, and kind of where we've got to today is the fact of that the value of our system is that it's, it's performance-based, almost like the NFL. It's performance-based. So if I do a good job on a job opportunity, then mm -hmm. those people know it. So instead of like having reviews where um, somebody says their opinion about how I did on a job, it's really documented, kind of like a 40 or a bench press mm -hmm. and things of that nature. So now I'm giving little contractors or small contractors opportunities to get big contracts based off how well they do with jobs. And that's the only thing that they're looking for. Ooh, that's rich. So you, you created an app? Yes, sir. You created the app? Not personally. I designed it. Got I designed it, got it, got it. I started off it, and I designed and then, it. And they did all the coding. Then I found somebody to code. Well, you created it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, was, they wouldn't have had a damn thing to code if you didn't give me an idea. Yeah, yeah it was the thought process. No, I'm, my, my point <laughs> is I'm, how impressive that is because considering your background, but what's your undergraduate degree in? Sociology, and then I got a master's in uh, sports administration. And then, your, and then your first profession is football, obviously. Yep. And then your initial entrepreneurship entree is providing the services, services, moving services for universities. And then you go into, into the digital space. Yep. Who are you? <laughs> uh, I would say I'm somebody that's not scared to fail. I know that's right. Um, that, they should be clapping on that. Now, all the time to clap. They, they yeah. should be clapping on that one. So, I mean, I've had, I've had opportunity. I've, I've started things and, and things have not worked. Um, but I think just looking back at my football career, how many times I felt like I had to start back at zero has helped me and not be scared of just trying to create, mm. create something. Because I know that if I'm at the ground, at the bottom level, that I'm willing to work my way up because I've done it before. Mm, that's good. That's good. You know, let me say this to you. I, we got to go. You know, the hour has just slipped by. <laughs> and and I, I just, I'm, I'm impressed with you. And I'm, I'm not, let me tell you what I'm, I'm not impressed with your company. Just let that sink in. I'm not impressed with your app. It's great, by the way. I'm impressed with you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with just your presentation of your intentions and your heart. And you present yourself to the world as someone who is thoughtful, who has, who has, who has been over a few mountains and in a few valleys, but it did, you didn't let it change you. And you didn't let it make you the worst version of yourself. And if I never see you again, which I hope to see you again on this platform, but if I never see you again, I want you to know something. Well done.